uh, works. So Nakamura says, <clears throat> every A cluster for every finite diagonal A in SL3 uh, has equations so uh, I'm going to write down some sort of basically gobbledygook so y to the L plus 1 equals uh, let me just continue to use the notations in the paper. Xi, y to the b, z to the f. Right? And y to the b plus 1, z to the f plus 1, equals some new, new coordinate, lambda, times x to the l. Yeah? And so you notice that the, the B here is getting incremented one, and the F is the, the B and the F are getting incremented, and the L is getting decremented. Right? And then there's going to be X, Y, Z equals pi. Right? And uh, so it's basically something similar here. You have to imagine that uh, I mean you don't need to write this down. It's, it's all in the paper. So psi eta zeta z to the c x to the d x to the a y to the e so you know these uh, there's sort of some kind of logic here but uh, it, it, it's a magic ritual said c plus 1 x to the d plus 1 is uh, mu y to the m and x to the a plus 1, y to the e plus 1, equals mu z to the n. <coughs> right? And moreover, either Uh, new, so, so and. So in all ca in all cases, psi lambda is pi, and e. This this product, this guy here and this guy, psi eta, is eta mu, is zeta nu, is pi is equal to pi. And either <coughs> either lambda mu nu is 1 over <coughs> sorry either lambda is eta times sorry eta times eta psi uh, psi zeta psi eta and pi is psi eta zeta or the other way around or psi equals psi eta zeta is uh, mu mu lambda mu mu la, lambda mu right so the, there are, there are two two slightly different cases right and so there's two slight the two slightly different cases correspond to what happens in an up triangle and what happens in a down triangle yeah and so uh, remember, each, each, 
each triangle in the decomposition that makes up one of these A-herbs is contained in one a tri contained in one of these regular triangles made up of of arrows out of the, the vertices, right? So there's a, the, this one here is made out of two arrows out of the top and one arrow out of the side, right? And so therefore, there's a well-defined notion of the thing being having the same orientation as this triangle or having the opposite orientation, so being up or down, right? And uh, so the one where psi, eta, and zeta are the fundamental ones and the other three are products of them corresponds to the up triangle and then the down triangle. So look, it's, uh, it, it's, a bit, it's just a bit tedious. There's, uh, you know, these, these relations, if you think about this psi, psi lambda, mu to nu, zeta nu, right? It's really saying that these three quantities, psi, eta, zeta, and uh, lambda mu nu, are a standard, they're, they're coordinates of P2 with a standard, um, what's, the, what's the word? The North, uh, standard Cremona transformation, standard quadratic transformation made on them. Right? These are the equations of a standard quadratic uh, and uh, here pi is lambda mu nu, right? And so, so, so look, this is just so the proof is this picture. And this picture, finally I'm going to be able to draw one of these tripods accurately, honestly. Right? And so what am I, what am I, the thing I'm doing is Okay, not, not very accurately. So, this is a jigsaw puzzle piece, right? And so this length here is equal to this length. Right? And this length here is equal to this length. And this piece here is congruent to this piece there. Yeah? And so if I, took, if I take this this piece, and I move him up there and repeat, they, they just form a parallel, they, they form a kind of a band going up there. And then if I translate again that way, I cover the whole plane. Yes? So, so satisfy two properties. Right, so these are monomials in, we're in M, right, and so the monomials in question are 1, X, and so on, all the way up to X to the power of whatever it is, the one that's not killed, L, yes, and so on, and then X, Y, Y, Y to the power of M, and up there to the X to the power of this last one here that survives is x to the power of a, y to the power of e, or something like that. Yes? So they satisfy two properties. One, they form a, they form a fundamental domain for translation. by invariant monomials. Right? 
So I've got this. Uh, so I've got this. Uh, uh, group A is Z three plus the, the, uh, L is Z three plus torsion. Right, and I, if I take these monomials and I evaluate the different torsion elements on it, I'm supposed to get I'm supposed to get one one of ev every character, right? And that means that uh, so if I take if I I could uh, evaluate this on all monomials in M. Right in X to the so this is on all sorry all monomials in X Y Z so if I do X to the I Y to the Z Y to the J Z to the K right so I evaluate on, the, on all of these and I'm going to get different congruence classes modulo one so these are each of these is a character of the lattice A of the group A so this is an character of the A action. Right? And the rules of the game is, in order to be an A cluster, I've got to have one element in each eigenspace of the A action, in each character of the A. Right? And so that means that uh, if I, I can think of the characters of the A as being uh, cosets of translation by invariant monomials. I take all of these x, i, y, j, z, k, and I think of translation by the invariant monomials, and uh, uh, the, the actual characters of the monomials are the cosets of that, which depend on in which coset I'm in. Right? And so that means that I, I have to have one, exactly one representative of each, of each uh, coset. So that, that's, a, that's a fundamental domain. Yeah, so, so this point, the, I mean, the, the point of this picture is that this is a tile, and this tile con, con, continues across the plane and tiles the plane exactly. Right, like, a, you know, chicken in the Escher picture. Yeah, so that's the, that's the first property. And the second property is that if I only look in the XY uh, uh, XY quadrant, if I only look at XY, I see a Newton polygon. Right? So this, and two, in each of the XY, YZ, and XZ uh, quadrants, It, they have the convexity of a Newton polygon. Convexity of the Newton polygon. Of an ideal. Yes? And so, so, so in other words, they, they, in, each, uh, in each thing here, they have to be a Newton polygon. However, this guy here only has one there's only one. There's only one place here where z, z reaches a maximum, right? So this is z to the power of uh, l or something, uh, z to the power of n, and then z to the n plus one will be a relation, right? So the relation has to be there. So this is a Newton polygon with only one valley, right? And so that 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 proves that proves this result. So, so you know, this is just a priori. You can write down directly every A cluster for every one of these groups. Yeah. And then for, for our particular group, for our particular A, we have this, this, uh, this kind of picture and we know how to write down clusters corresponding to, 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 to each of these triangles. And, uh, uh, and, you know, we tie up one with the other. So we show that, uh, we show that the things produced by Nakamura's algorithm, assuming that we're in 
a case of this particular group A that our triangles here give every one. Right? So, so let me just do this last, uh, this last case. So in, in this figure, So in this figure, I'm going to look at this triangle, triangle. So I'm going to write 614 and 731 and uh, this one here, which is still less, 245. Yes? And so uh, calculating, the cal calculating the dual cone sort of basically uh, the same as calculating the inverse of a matrix. So if I think of the matrix 6, 1, 4, 7, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5, right? If we're lucky, uh, I have written down here, Okay, so, uh, you know, I mean, it's the usual thing in linear algebra. Don't, uh, uh, if I write down minus 1, 2, 1, right? 1, minus 3, 2. 1, 2, minus 2. Right, then uh, this is 0, oh dear. Uh, this is 6 plus plus. 6 plus 8 minus 3. Okay, so I should, have, I, I should have just written these rows in a slightly different order. Yeah. Uh, I want... Uh, yes, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm being... Uh, I'm being... Uh, maybe I should have written down 2, 4, 5. Right. So if I do this, what, what do I get? Minus 2 plus 8 plus 5. Right. So this is 11 times 1, 1, 1. Yes? So, in, so, 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 you know, to be more pedestrian about it, I could look at, I could look at this line, right, and say, I want, I want to find the monomials on which these two guys both score zero, and this guy scores plus one. Yes? So uh, uh, that monomial should be uh, y squared z over x. Yeah? And so you think of y squared z divided by x, and y squared z divided by x. Both of these score zero on him, right? Here, this is 13, uh, sorry, 13 minus 11, 13 minus 2, 11, right? So 11 is 1, yes? And so th that's, this, that's this line times these three, uh, <coughs> yes? And so, so, it says y squared equals alpha x, x z squared equals beta y cubed, uh, 
x y squared equals gamma z squared and then I need to I need to write the complementary equations which are x squared is beta gamma y so y squared z that was now y to the fourth is alpha gamma z and z cubed is alpha beta y of course x y z is alpha beta gamma yes <coughs> So on the, on, the, on the one hand, we know all possible clusters for the group. On the other hand, uh, I can calculate all the clusters that... Uh, I, I can do this calculation here for each of these triangles, right? And uh, the clusters I get are covered... Uh, sorry, all the clusters that come in that way are covered by, the, by this. So that's how, that's, that's how you can prove the theorem. Right? So, uh, uh, you know, I don't really have time to go into the, uh, how we actually get the Mackay correspondence out of this. So, uh, so, so remember I've got C3, I'm mapping down to C3, to this X, which is C3 over A. And then I'm doing this Y. So the y is a hill, right? So, so, so let, 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 let me just remind you of this, this setup. I, do, I call this map pi. I write pi lower star of OC3. This is just the polynomial ring viewed as a module here. I think of this as being direct sum of these uh, L... Um, L primed, and I'm going to, let, let me write I here. So this I runs through characters of A. Yes? So, the, so, so why, th this thing here, by definition, is the universal solution to making all the Li equals the pullback, so phi. Phi upper star of Li primed divided by torsion locally free. Right. So, uh, so these guys here in general are not locally free because uh, there, there may be lots, there may be several monomials. So, so you know, any, any, in any of these things, I might have y squared z, y squared z, and x, two monomials in one and the same character space, right? And uh, they're not. So, in order, in order to, in order to in order to make this thing locally free, I have to introduce the ratio y squared to z to x. I do it in a birational way, which is this torsion locally free. So, the, so the, this a help, this a help, by definition, is a universal solution to making the simultaneous blow up of each of these sheaves. Each of these sheaves is rank one torsion free sheaf, but it possibly needs more than one generator at a point. So I introduce the ratio. Whenever I see this y squared z, two, two characters in the same eigenspace, I have to make into a regular function the ratio between them. And I'm doing, this is one of the solutions here. This is one affine piece of a, the solution to this problem. Right? And so this guy here has on him Li. Yes? And... Uh, so the Li has, in particular, churn classes. And I can evaluate this Li on... So, so now 
I've got a, I've got a kind of resolution of singularities. I hesitate to, to draw it. So, so I have this singular variety here. And here I have a resolution of singularities. So it maybe has uh, surfaces like this, or slightly more complicated surfaces like this. Right? So it might have a nice triangle there. It might have these hexagons, regular hexagon things. Right? It's a toric, it's a non-singular toric variety. So, and, but it has a divisor on it like this. Right? So on any of these, I can take these, these sheaves Li, and I can take the degree of Li against any curve gamma. So I take this curve gamma, for example, and calculate its degree. Right? So when you're taking this, I'm thinking of the divisor as something to multiply a curve by. I'm really taking first term class of Li. Right, I'm taking the first churn class of Li in h upper 2 of y, z. And I'm multiplying this against all possible curves, gamma, in h lower 2 of y, z. Yeah? And so I, I can do this all over the, I can uh, do, do, do this all over the place. And uh, so um, this is called, this is, so the thing I want, the thing I really like is that there's some kind of one-to-one -one correspondence between these Li's and the homology classes appearing here, right? And, you know, the problem is that, well, the first problem is sort of basically that this homology is the wrong invariant. And this is something that uh, we discovered over a long, long period of time. The correct thing to do the correct thing to realize is that the, uh, the Li, uh, the Li are line bundles, are in this case line bundles, but in, 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 in more generality they might be vector bundles, are line bundles. And we try to prove to use them as a basis for k naught of y. Right? And so the, the hint is this first churn class. So the, the thing that happens here is that uh, so, so I have all of these Li's I have, so I have um, index of L to Z3. So, so this I is the characters of the group, so it's the, the number of them. Yes. And so the first churn class, the first churn class of the Li uh, go, go to H2 of YZ. And it, it it can be shown that the, the, they map surjectively. They, they, they map to, uh, to, they generate. The images, these classes, generate. Right. And then if I want to, if I want to, to find H4, I need to do, I need to find the relations between these, between these, right? And so, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not saying anything very precise here, but uh, if I take, uh, for example, some virtual sum, if I take some, uh, you know, it might be, for example, L1 plus L, L1 plus L2 minus L3 minus L4. Right? So I, I, I'm thinking of these as, these are some of the character sheaves, Li, but I'm taking some formal combination of them in K theory, in, in K naught of Y. And suppose, 
suppose that uh, C1 of this combination is zero. Right? So in other words, these two guys, L1, L1 plus L2 and L3 plus L4 have uh, add up to the same thing in H2. Right? Then take C2 of this relation. Right? And these classes generate H2 of Y, Z. So this is uh, basically an Ali Cross thesis. So this is called Reed's recipe. In other words, uh, you know, the in initially we were hoping for some kind of natural way of writing down uh, algebraic cycles in one-to-one -one correspondence with the uh, representations of the group. Well, uh, it turns out that that's not exactly the way the world works, uh, and you have to pass via this. Uh, this, uh, in a, in, if you just ask for K theory, then you get you get on the nose a basis for the K-theory as an additive group. So K-theory also has a multiplicative group structure, tense product, and then we're completely lost. We don't know, any, we don't know anything about that. But as an, as an abelian group, we get on the nose these, all, these, uh, these uh, classes uh, form a basis for the K-naught. But if you want to go from K-naught to homology, then you have to do this cookery, right? And so this, uh, this word recipe means something you do in cookery. It's a method of, uh, uh, you know, putting together ingredients to, uh, to get the good result. Anyway, uh, this, uh, this, this has now moved, moved on from K-theory. So K-theory is a kind of, you can think of K-theory as a quotient of the derived category. So the derived category is a, kind of much more sophisticated tool and uh, now you can do this kind of Reed's recipe in derived category. So I'm not going to go into that. Some of you will have heard Tim Rogvinenko or Alistair Crow talking about it at different times. Okay, so I'm, uh, thank you for your patience.